Shalom, brothers and sisters. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you. From Yahuwah, our Father, and Yahusha, he is the Mashaya, the one that carries the burden of Yah, his voice, our High Priest, soon coming King. Hear, O Yeshua, Yahuwah, who is our Mighty One, he is one. There is no other mighty one in existence than Yahuwah. And Yahusha is his voice. This is Brother Dawood coming to you again to ask a question. Do you trust in Yahuwah? Some of them may say they do. But if your date for the Passah, Passover, and Feast of Unleavened Bread is not this number, and your date is in March going into April, you do not trust in Yah. Why do you say that, Brother Dawood? Because they adjusted the calendar, added months to bring the moon back to the equinox. What do they say? Well, if we don't adjust the calendar, the Passover is going to be all the way back in the winter months, just like yours. So we have to bring it back to the equinox. Let's see who they're bringing it back to. Wiki. Istra. Modern paganism. A holiday. That means holy day. A set apart day. Name for the goddess is part of the neo-pagan Wiccan wheel of the year. What does that mean? Look up top, the pagan calendar of festivals, Aprilis. When does it start? Astara, who's Astara? Istra, she goes by many names. Astara, the 21st of March. Who starts their calendar year for March 21st? Pope Gregory? What does he say that this day is? The equinox. Let's continue. In some forms of modern Germanic paganism, where did the Jews come from? Istra or Astara? Many names. Let me stop for a second. She also goes by Ishtar. She also goes by Anana. Who's Anana? A lot. Allah too. Alilat. The woman that is worshipped in Saudi Arabia, in the Kaaba. The one whom the father said, if he comes and catches anyone doing these things, he's going to wipe them out. Regarding this veneration, veneration means worship. Carol M. Cusack comments that, among adherents, Istra is associated with the coming of spring and the dawn. Hmm. Istra brings in the spring 
and the sunrise. And her festival is celebrated at the spring equinox. What? What is it our brothers are telling us? You cannot let the moon drift from the equinox. You have to add additional months and bring her back to the equinox. Hmm. You are to follow the first new moon after the equinox. Why are they all hovering? The whole world. The Jews. The Israelite brothers. The people on the internet. And even some of the children of Yesharu. Why are they all hovering around the equinox? Here's the answer. Because she, not Yahuwah, because she, who is she? Astara, Istra, Ishtar, Anana, Alatu, because she brings renewal and rebirth from the death of winter. What do your brothers tell you all the time? If you let the moon drift back on its own, hold it one second. Did you hear that? How do you stop it? Can you go up in the heavens and stop the drift? Can you command it to come back to wherever you want it to go? No. So what do they do? They practice a delusion. And they say you have to make this adjustment to the calendar to bring the moon back to the equinox where the rain, the heat, and the dew comes down. But they're not bringing the moon back to the equinox. That's impossible for them to do. What are they doing? They're going to the equinox. To do what? To celebrate the festival of Istra, Ishtar, Anana, Semiranis, so many names. Some heathens associate Istra and Ayun, keeper of the apples of youth in Scandinavian mythology. Whichever country that she's in, they have a name for her. It changes as they go. Now we've been trying to figure out all these years what does Israel stand for? And I believe that we're the closest as we can come today. Ishtar, Ra, and El. Israel. Remember the transliteration is Yah Sharon. They don't say that. They don't accept anything to do with Yah. He is not their mighty one, but is, or Ishtar is, how do we know this? Because this is what they're trying to achieve, bringing the moon back to the equinox so that they can meet with the goddess Ishtar because she brings renewal and rebirth from the death of winter. Brothers and sisters, if you keep following these Gentiles, when you get into 
the wilderness, you're going to suffer the repercussions for your actions. And it may be this weekend, the kingdom calendar. Once we get into the kingdom, the influence of Pope Gregory will be no more. We will follow the moon. The moon is the sign of the righteous. The moon is the sign of feast. All of your days are on the moon, not on the sun. The sun is not even in the equation. Okay, let's look at the simplicity of this calendar. Look at day number one, RNM, Renewed Moon's Day, Hadash. There she is, I see her. The gates of the temple are open on this day. There's a celebration on this day. You go to the temple and pray on this day. You have a feast on this day. And in the evening, it begins your six working days. The gates of the temple are shut. Then you come to the first Shabbat of the month. It's going to be on day eight. The gates of the temple are open again. Then in the evening, you come right back to your six working days. You're going to come to day 13. In between day 13 and 14, you see FM there. That means full moon. Hmm. And on the 14th day, in the evening, will be Yahuwah's Pasa and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. On the 15th day, we don't have it here yet, but if we put a W and a uh, W and an M here, it'll be the waning moon because the moon begins to wane, but it's still full. You begin your Pasa and your Feast of Unleavened Bread. How does the day work? From the 14th day in the evening to the 15th day in the evening is one day. Then after that day is done, you come right back to your six working days. Six working days, you are to eat unleavened bread. When you come to the seventh day, which will be the 21st, for the Daud, you said six working days. Yes. It's really seven when you add 15. When you come to the 21st, it's the last day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You are to make extra because the next day, it's going to be your third Shabbat of the month. And this is the Sabbath that the scripture speaks about, that you are to bring a sheaf to the priest the day after the Sabbath. That'll be the 23rd. Hmm. Then you begin your count for your first week going towards the Feast of Weeks. Then you'll start all over again once you spot the renewed moon and continue your count. This is perfection. Why are we following the Gentiles in their Pope Gregory's calendar and their equinox statements? Why is no one else protesting against this behavior? It seems that everyone is on the wide path. I was chosen for this to bring this message to Yesharu, to the ones in whom he is handpicked. It cost a great price. I lost my health 
tried to shut me down. But I survived. While I was in the hospital, my wife came to me and she said, I'm leaving you. I cannot be with you anymore. You are the most righteous man that I've ever seen and I am not righteous at all. I am performing wickedness. So she bowed out gracefully. <laughs> we're not enemies, we're not fighting or any of those things. We're still friends. But our marriage is done. While I was dealing with that, my firstborn son died. Tore my heart into pieces. The enemy couldn't get me. But instead it took my son. While that was happening, I lost my income, my business, my friends, everything around me was just falling apart. I was all alone, dealing with all of these tragedies at one time. Then I realized I have an example. Job. His name is Yaob. He went through the same things. And when he came out, he came out with great substance. His health was restored. The father gave him a new wife. He had more children. His lands, his cattle and his herds, his wealth was restored. And he had more than ever before. I'm looking forward to that day of restoration. Aren't you? If you trust in Yah, do not waver. Do not follow any other date than this. This date is from the path of years. Without a shadow of a doubt, This is his time. The others, they can't tell you that. They keep adjusting the calendar to bring it back to their goddess. Istra. Enjoy your Passover and your Feast of Unleavened Bread. Remember, have your shoes on your feet staff in your hand and be fully clothed. He may send the Uber to pick us up. Shalom.